Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Um, I was quite uh, curious for some time that how the national education policy of 2020 will have an effect on the statistics, data science, and machine learning education in India. And I'm so happy to have uh, Dr. Manisha Modak. Uh, she is an associate professor at the Department of Zoology at SP College Pune. Uh, welcome, ma'am. Uh, it's so good to have you. Um, we will, so the question is that, uh, I was interested in statistics and why, uh, like why we are having a talk with a zoology professor. That's an interesting question that comes to us that may come to the student's mind. Uh, the reason is that after, uh, she's closely associated with, uh, IQST team of, uh, her college, which it is internal quality assurance committee. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you, ma'am, for explaining that. And it works hand in hand with the NAP, right? NAP. Yes. So she knows, she, uh, she suggested me to do the, the podcast, to do the understanding, to explain it to you in two different, uh, two different videos. First will be the discussion about the general structure. And I, I'm sure ma'am is the best person out there I know to help me in that. And the second half will be based on how it is having an effect on the statistics education, data science education, and machine learning education. So happy to have you, ma'am, once again. Thank and you. Thank uh, you very much. Absolutely. And um, so you have asked me, uh, you have suggested me to uh, make it a quiet impromptu, it's quite uh, natural without having a uh, grand plan ahead. So what do you think the first question I should ask you? Um, like, what is, okay. So first question I should ask, what is NEP? And uh, so that's the first question I should ask you, yeah. Uh, actually, basically, NEP is National Education Policy, and this is implemented to give some flexibility to the students because up till now, whatever uh, we are having, what system we are having in that system, for example, if we uh, choose to go for a science faculty, we are not allowed to go or take any subjects from arts faculty or any subjects from commerce faculty. So this uh, national education policy is precisely uh, has uh, two, three motives uh, in that. One is to have to give the flexibility to the students so that a student which wants to, which is doing something in science and he wanted to do something in fine arts, he can take the credits from fine arts as well. So this flexibility is given to the student. Second thing is that one more uh, additional thing which is there that is uh, I mean, there should be some skill enhancement because up till now, whatever we are having, that was a practical course, uh, that was a theory course and practical course, which are uh, based on the theory. But now uh, the skill enhancement courses which are introduced and it is advisable that these courses should be should go in hand in hand with industry. Because what is the requirement of industry? The academicians should understand this requirement and then they design a course accordingly so that there should be a skilled persons which are available for the industry. So there are two types of skill enhancement courses which are uh, introduced over here. And another thing uh, they have introduced that is on job training. This is again one of the different or uh, I should think I should say this is something different than the previous one, because in on job training, you are making the student to uh, immediately to be absorbed into the uh, industry so that it will have some skill, some training in at least a particular area. So all these things uh, are there in national education policy. But basically, the first thing is that the flexibility to the student. One more type of flexibility is there in national education policy that you can quit in between. This uh, in national education policy, the graduate, I mean, the entire structure is changed. Right now, we had 10 plus 2 plus 3 plus 2. Like 10 uh, is for school education, 2 is for 11, 12, that is higher secondary uh, education, uh, 3 years of graduation, and 2 years of uh, post graduation. This was our course up till now. But now it had changed to 12 plus 4. Okay, 12 plus 4 plus 1 means you have 12 years that is up till 12 you will have the school education then you will have the degree of four years and then you can have the uh, go for the msc which can be of one year or it can be of two years as well so there is again a flexibility even in four years degree also there are two types of degrees if you want to quit in between after three years you will get bsc honors and if you uh, quit after four years, you will get a regular degree that is BSc in science. 
that is mm. bachelor in science one more thing added over there if a person want to quit after one year the person can quit from one year and he will get the certificate if okay. the person want to quit after two years the person can the student can quit he will get the diploma okay so uh, after if the person quits on the first year the person will get a certificate in the second year the person will get a diploma in third year he will get yes. a honors the fourth yes. year be a bachelor's in science degree right am i right correct correct, correct. so um this is quite interesting why i'm asking you this because that means whatever the course has to be designed in such a way that at every year it learns something valuable like correct. not randomly organized am i right ma'am yes you have to design the courses in such a way that at least after one year he will be uh, he will have a set of course based on which we can give him the certificate like for example in our case that is for zoology what we have done we have taken all the courses which are related to diagnostics so we will give the certificate certificate in diagnostics in okay. second year uh, we have designed all the courses which are related to application oriented uh, with respect to zoology so right. at the end of second year we can give diploma in applied zoology okay like okay. this you have to design your courses accordingly okay this is i mean i didn't know that this was coming but i saw this there was a, a data science course ma'am uh, that is organized by iit madras and they have done exactly the same thing like it's an online course okay it yes. has been launched two three years before and it has exactly this structure first year you get a certificate second is diploma and third this is quite interesting because it's it's i can now understand it's coherent with the whole thing okay um now um my uh following up you know follow-up question to this is that so the goal of NEP is this just this that it the student has the flexibility to uh I shouldn't quit but transform or move into a different or get it get out of the system and do something else. Is it the only goal, ma'am? This is not the only goal, but this is one of the goals is this. This is not the only goal. It's the most important but goal. Our most important goal is flexibility in uh taking or uh, choosing the courses. Okay. That is the most important goal of it. Now, uh, okay. So first is this flexibility in this whole uh, leaving the system thing. Now, how they, how the choosing of the uh, choosing the uh, courses come up? Like, can you give an example? Uh, like, for example, if I'm uh, if a person is doing uh, FIBSC zoology, right? Now he has open uh, electives. Now this open elective, he has to select it from other faculty. It should be from arts, it should be from commerce. It is definitely not from science. So it will uh, select some psychology because zoology students are nowadays very much interested in psychology. So the person will select open elective in psychology. So both that is four credits he will earn from psychology. Or the person will go for some uh, commerce, like some tally course or some uh, share trading course or something like that. So it will be having four credits. So he will have four additional credit, which is not of his subject or not of his faculty, but it is from other thing. And of course, which is valuable uh, for his entire life. OK, interesting. So I mean, I think the goal of it is to promote interdisciplinary work. Am I? Yes, yes, interdisciplinary. Yes, interdisciplinary work. But even before uh, the concept of interdisciplinary was there. But at that time, this interdisciplinary nature was within the faculty. Mm. That is, science is within the science. But now they are expecting beyond the faculty. OK, so a person, uh, let's say someone is interested in literature, the person can go and learn uh literature yes. and take literature course okay yes 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 um so this grades will be uh, updated in the you know whatever the i mean this new this optional thing yes yes and they are compulsory i mean the student has to learn uh, get four credits from open elective that is not from his uh faculty so the student has to get it from other things so the student should know what other what is there in other faculty also see graduate now department? Yeah, graduation had come to a basic education nowadays. So if a person want to explore some other areas from other faculty, 
that person can do that also okay no uh, my another next follow up thank you for explaining it to me ma'am and others uh, who will watch the video my next follow up question will be let's say uh, i know let's say i'm in a first year and i i enrolled into zoology and i learned uh, diagnostics as you said and i have i quitted the course by getting a certificate now can i get into another second year course of let's say psychology or no i cannot do that right right now it is not like that okay right okay. now it is not like that but yes over the years it will also come okay so it's like there's a discussion of that going on or it's like we yes. have a hunch yes it is going on but uh, it will it is difficult task uh, to do this kind of thing at college level yeah at iit level this is possible but at college level it is difficult to do uh, so things are still because, going on because of the gradient of the knowledge and uh, yeah. yes. not only knowledge gradient of the infrastructure uh, which is available and all those things are matters a lot and especially for multi faculty colleges it has to be uh, one of the limiting factor i understand that's so interesting i wish i could have um, uh, been in such a, a journey uh, let's see what my juniors have in their upcoming years okay uh, my next question be to you ma'am is that let me just understand first is there are two things one is a flexibility of the degree flexibility of leaving out of the course at any time and the second is the flexibility of learning from different from different domains interdisciplinary yeah. and no no interdisciplinary like enhancing and that's op that's like optional means that uh, compulsory optional i mean that's what i mean no one more thing is there that just like you exit uh multiple times you can enter also in multiple times in same course like for example if i am doing fy and i quit uh, my uh, thing uh, getting a certificate and i uh, quit from the system from fy i again after 2 years 3 years i can again take the admission for sy and i can continue my degree okay so uh, can that can this work in a different college let's say am i making sense ma'am like in different college means what let's say uh, there are two college college 1 and college 2 uh, let's say college 2 is better than college 1 okay in some yeah, some it should, it should work only thing is that there should be equivalence yeah Because yeah the, yeah this has to be done then it can work i mean if the colleges are all colleges are affiliated to sppu they will be having same uh, kind of sila, uh, same syllabus okay here uh, they can give, go but uh, for colleges like ours we have autonomous colleges so mm -hmm. we have different syllabi so for that equivalence is needed so uh, tell me one thing then okay got it so a person can change if it they are on the same syllabus now why why did the government why do why do you think the government you know why is not every college or you know of zoology have the why doesn't what do not they have the same syllabus there are two three things first thing is that the availability of the expert persons like uh, and of course the availability of the um, uh, infrastructure like for example any college in pune they can have the uh, courses which are in zoology which are very advanced courses because they have infrastructure to do the practicals for those uh, that particular courses so they can run this but similar courses cannot be run in a rural areas so in that case you have to i mean uh, i was there in sppu uh, syllabus making uh, bos member also so at that time whenever uh, we used to add some new course we have to think that is it feasible to take even in a remote area uh, the college which is present in the remote area where resources are limited i should not think only about pune mumbai or something like that i should think of those colleges which are in a remote area now in this case what happens the colleges which are present in the urban area or rather i should say the advanced colleges they will get the diluted syllabus and therefore uh, if you get the autonomy then you have the syllabus framing flexibility is there uh, syllabus framing framework uh, freedom is there so we can design a syllabus accordingly okay okay makes sense so there is a general syllabus for let's say for the colleges under the SP, spppu yes. um, 
and there is autonomous like the next level where yes. the has the freedom to do it yes okay because of the scarcity of the resources and the scarcity yes. of the okay i got it and um so uh, i just want to be uh, sure iit is an autonomous body yes okay yes. just like uh, sp college pune right yes. they can make their own syllabus yes no um like, iit is autonomous since long yes yes okay yes now my uh, now my thing is that how do this so i have this doubt i don't know whether this comes up in nep or not because i think by this implementation of mit nep it came up that in statistics not even in statistics i think for every science and every topic out there every subject out there this cuet is done this new cuet uh, central university examination test i guess mm -hmm. entrance test so does i mean do the colleges like the private colleges uh, sp college is a private college no it's not private college it's it is affiliated to pune university okay so uh, sp college take admission using cuet no but we can have, have our own entrance okay so every college can have his or, or not his or her its own entrance right and it's also only it, autonomous only autonomous college only autonomous college okay yes yes and the non autonomous college must take admission through cvt yes for pg for pg of course for 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 pg post graduate not ug but ug not ug ug i mean it is a, on 12th mark list and merit basis so there is no need of uh, any kind of entrance or something like that okay for undergraduate it's like based on 11th and 12th marks yes for postgraduate it's mostly based on uh it's based on cuet and for autonomous but, but one more thing one more thing cot is eligible only for those uh, departments i mean only for those centers which are there in pune university Hmm. Now there are certain PG college, uh, PG departments which are not of Pune University, which are not present in the Pune University, but they are affiliated to Pune University. Now okay. they okay. don't require this COT; they can have their own entrance. Okay. So the problem, why I'm, what is? I mean, I mean, I mean, let's talk about the future of India. Okay, let's talk. Yes, you know. Yes. So as days goes go, go by, the number of colleges will be increasing, right? and then since the number of colleges will be increasing the number of such examinations will also be increasing entrance exam definitely, definitely. So i'm just thinking like how will the students get to know about all, i mean all such colleges and because the whole thing is that every student wants education let's say so the goal is every student should know about each and every entrance examination that is going on otherwise because the student the student may not get the best option they can look for the next option but this whole uh process of the path is not very clear as as you know according to me but for undergraduate for undergraduate there is no entrance so basic education is uh, is there for everyone such kind of entrances are there only for post graduation okay so for undergraduate there is no problem so how to solve this issue for post graduation for post graduation you should have some common entrance uh, definitely but uh, this will be again a difficult task uh, Im in, with immediate effect because there are too many colleges there are too many interests uh, plus they have to deal with the university and all those things coming together and making uh, something it is uh, difficult right now okay probably it will happen after some years like after 5 10 years uh, it will definitely happen i mean it has to happen it has to happen i mean i think this is my hunch that this may happen that the exams will be of two three levels the first level the second level and the third level the third the best level will be done by the best colleges out there tier 1 colleges yes. the second level yes. will be for the tier 2 colleges and yes. whoever pass that they will be eligible for that eligible. and then this will come but it will take time okay definitely not uh, in the immediate uh, future got it got it i mean uh, there are many things that may go on i'm just going into your mind and the discussion of nep to understand whether it's coming really really soon yes, probably yes. okay okay so um we understood the flexibility in uh, in the whole um, system. system um learning and degree and also is there any change in the examination structure you know 
is there any like what are the other changes i mean uh, there is again flexibility which is given to the uh, colleges or uh, to the institutions uh, like we have said for 60 40 we will have 40% of uh, continuous assessment and 60% uh, will be semester end examination some can choose 50 50 i mean it depends okay so you also talked about the job thing so how you were you know how nep is trying to implement that in the whole education of the four years like uh, for example uh, there is uh, at fourth year there is a 8 uh, uh, no, four, four credit course called as on job training four credit means you should engage the uh, person for 60 hours okay so that is called as on job this is on job training so in our case we have uh, taken uh, animal tissue culture like uh, culturing the animal cells at uh, uh, artificial environment and this is nowadays very much required in uh, any biotech industry any pharma industry because a person who is skilled in uh, cell culture that will be immediately picked up so uh, we have uh, designed a course like that So, so like it will be that, uh, everyone will have their own on job training courses so uh, it will be done this whole uh, animal tissue culture that you told uh, yeah. it will be done inside the college laboratory yes, yes inside the college inside the college okay but so, you can collaborate i mean if you have good collaborations and you can collaborate as, as well okay do we have the enough infrastructure to do this for every single student out there who are interested yes for our college yes we have okay what Because about the, no uh, what happened the uh, number of student is also decreased no the because the number the uh, the one who is uh, selecting fybsc zoology we have allowed only 30 students to take the admission or oh, it's like uh, it is under nep or it's just your uh... it, is, it is nep it is under nep i mean every college has to do this because previously what happened previously the student has to take four subjects like physics chemistry maths biology whatever your physics chemistry botany zoology but now he is having only zoology okay right so the division which was there of 120 students that division has been divided into four subjects hmm. so every every subject will get 30 students okay interesting that's why we can uh, afford such kind of practicals uh, because the number is limited So this NEP is like has told every single college out there to take thirty student under a, for every subject, not more than that. No, not for every subject. Like for zoology, uh, we have uh, one division, so we have taken thirty students. But for statistics, for example, there are two divisions, so we have given sixty students to them. What are the two divisions? Do you know about that? What are the two divisions means? Uh, for statistics, you told me that uh, there, there two are divisions. two divisions. Two divisions. like statistics will be uh, will go uh, with um, physics chemistry uh, botany zoology and statistics means it can go for with b group also and it can go with a group also okay so one division from b group one division from a group so statistics had approved two divisions in our case so we have uh, given 60 students to them okay okay this is i i didn't i am not getting it probably because you know i have not been uh, yes. i didn't uh, learn in that way okay but this is for sure that for every subjects we have uh, given a set number of students only those students can be admitted okay my next question is it's a, probably it's a, you know probably it's uh, too much of uh, Hi, I think you would. Did any of you talk about uh, the effect of Chat GPT or artificial intelligence in uh, education? No. Okay. Not at all. Some mentions are there about artificial uh, artificial intelligence, but not about uh, Chat GPT. Nothing. Even AI also doesn't have. I mean, pure sciences we really uh, doesn't work a uh, lot with AI, and therefore there is uh, no this kind of mention in any of you. What else do you think I should? Uh, every student should know about NEP for their whole structure of. Course, the, I mean, there is one major subject like if that person want to do a BSc zoology, then one major subject will be there that will be zoology. So whatever credits are there, out of those credit, fifty percent credits will be from zoology. Okay. And then he has to select one minor subject. Now minor can be any any subject from the faculty. 
like the zoology person can take botany mathematics statistics anything and he has to continue for four years uh, one course of minor that is one theory course and one practical course so it is just like engineering like for example my uh, uh, my son is doing uh, industrial uh, engineering in IIT Kharagpur, but he had taken minor as a computer science. Okay. So he will have two degrees, one with, I mean, he will be having degree major with industrial and minor with computer science. Mm -hmm. So like this, here also we will get uh, a major with zoology, minor with whatever we have selected. Okay. And... Uh... Does NEP talk about the postgraduate education? Uh, like, what yeah, are the postgraduate? Uh, yes, postgraduate for postgraduate, uh, they have uh, made the rules, but uh, I had not gone through it uh, because in my uh, department, uh, there is no post graduation, so I had not gone through it. One more additional thing, uh, what NEP had uh, given that there should be one course, compulsory course, which is from IKS, that is Indian Knowledge System, that has to be compulsory course. What is this okay. IKS? IKS is Indian Knowledge System. That yeah. means that a course which is based on Indian traditional knowledge. Like it's like history or like this? Uh, no. Like for in our case, what we have done, we have taken the uh, animal husbandry in ancient India. Like okay. animal husbandry, whatever uh, livestock which we are using right now, may not be the same in ancient India. Like in uh, Harappan Sanskriti, some livestock will be different. Even in Vedic period, the livestock will be different. The maintaining those livestock, the methods are different. So all these things are from ancient India. That is from what is there in traditional life. For example, botany people, they had taken something from Ayurveda. So mm. every had taken something from traditional or Indian traditional knowledges. There are two motos for this, basically. We should understand what is there in uh, our ancient uh, uh, thing. Absolutely. Because see, uh, our thing, which we only say that Amchakade, we had this previously, we had this previously. There is no global acceptance for any of our knowledge. So if we understand what was there, and if we try to do some modifications, some innovations on that, that will be definitely beneficial. So precisely keeping the same motto in mind that we should understand what was there with us and how we can modify this for the current era. Uh, so this uh, one course was introduced that is a compulsory course that is IKS. Every subject will have its own IKS. This is interesting. This will be fun. Yes. This is, uh, I mean, even I was when I was preparing the syllabus, that was that time also, it was a very interesting thing to me. Hey, what is this? I'm uh, suddenly talking about some uh, prehistoric and uh, period and all those things. So it is really interesting to understand what was there. And of course, if we can think on it, we can modify it, we can uh, apply, try to apply this in modern uh, sciences, then definitely we will come up with something very different. Absolutely. I really uh, totally agree to that, ma'am. That I think this is something we should be taught about the history uh, because we can, of course, uh, get some ideas and do things differently. We can get inspired of the people who did it. And uh, we should have a strong cultural link. Uh, and uh, we it's should be. Simple, it's a simple thing. We used to say that, uh, let's say, Karela. Karela is the anti diabetic property. We say that Karela is anti diabetic property. But you are not going to sell Karela or any extract of Karela as a uh, as a pharma drug in uh, in uh, the pharmaceutical, I mean, in phar uh, pharmacy. For that, what you have to do, you have to understand what that Karela in actually contains. Hmm. Then you can have that active ingredient, isolate that active ingredient, prepare that active ingredient, and then you can sell it as a drug. Hmm. But for this, you should know at least that the Karela has anti-diabetic property. Sure. If you don't know this, then how can you do further? Nice. I I like your example, ma'am. Yeah, uh, because it is the thing. I mean, we uh, then otherwise why Pashelkar need to fight for the curcumin? <laughs> True. Okay. My next question, ma'am, will be to you. Uh, to understand, is there something about the grading system? The uh, how the students will be evaluated in the NEP? No, I mean, there is no specific system which is given. They had given the whole freedom to the uh, institutions that it should be your own way. Uh, 
and the grading system is same as the previous one i mean there is no much change in that only thing is that for continuous assessment uh, there are multiple forms of continuous assessment you should take i mean you can take group discussions you can take assignments you can take presentations but i mean you can decide your own uh, continuous assessment uh, programs and you can take it what it's is this continuous like assessment thing me continuous assessment is uh, you have to and uh, you have to evaluate the students periodically after every uh, after every uh, some uh, period of time so that you will learn uh, how uh, i mean you will understand how student actually learned that is called as a continuous assessment not the semester examination or midterm uh, it's uh, apart from yes, that yes it is there but 40% of the weightage in our college we had given 40% of the weightage for continuous assessment Okay. And fifty percent of the weightage for semester end examination. Semester few colleges, a uh, few colleges had also opted fifty fifty. Okay, so they have like uh, NAP has given guidelines like this is the maximum and minimum you can go. No, no, they have not given anything. They have just Statistics. said that you have to do it. Yes, there there should be some continuous some portion should be of continuous assessment and some portion should be of semester end examination. Okay. in this age, so being a you know, zoology professor ma'am in this age of um chat gp i hope you have gone through chat gpt ma'am right in yes, this age I of chat gpt where you know every answer is just available at the blink of an eye uh what do you think do you think presentation is a very good way of uh, um understanding the students prowess uh presentation means what in what presentation term idea in front of everybody um because see what happens in chat gpt chat gpt will give you in a in a minute but it will give you a very small answer okay and if you want to work on any idea there should be a expansion of that idea that expansion you will not get from chat gpt because i had i had uh, i mean i will just give you the example i don't know whether it this example will be suitable or not Uh, even my students because i don't give the notes uh, so my students uh, prepare the notes from chat gpt okay. okay when the question is asked for one mark they will write the same answer if the question is asked for five marks even then they will answer the same question even the question is asked for 10 marks even then they will answer only that much so if the question is asked for 10 marks you have to expand or each and every point which is there So may I add something? Yes. May I add something, ma'am, or you? Yes, yes, yes. You can. So, uh, this is what I think that just a single prompt will not do. You have to apply many prompts over and like you have. Yes. They are not giving the same answer. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, probably not, but uh, students will not take this much effort. Okay, that's and their. Uh, but the students are not taking this much effort. Yeah, I mean, I have seen that this kind of thing, like it gives a. list of points i will say and yes. then i ask it it does it just give brief points and then i ask it to add upon it add upon it add upon yes. it then yes. i it, add, it adds it well that's why i asked yes. you yes and you should also understand that what is appropriate for your question everything may not be appropriate for your question you're right yes. so that was also there i mean i have uh, done that chat gpt only once or twice but uh, whatever i have understood from the entire process is this Okay, so there is some continuous assessment that will be happening all throughout the semester, like at regular, let's say one week or two weeks interval, right? Yes, yes. I think this is very important because this will keep the students in track, like you know. Yes. Constantly, yes. They, they continuously, uh, they know that uh, something or the other, and uh, see the continuous assessment may not be every time from the academics. You can also uh, take the continuous assessment which is based on something non-academic also. Like in my class, what I do. uh i had asked them to uh, go through the uh, go through the um, work of different scientists and give the presentation of 5 minutes on that so what will happen they will understand what are different scientists what they have done and of course they will understand the inspirational uh, stories of all those scientists so i i normally give 5 marks for uh, such kind of things uh, and uh, again one more addition thing i will do that i will ask the students also to give the mark and i will also give the marks so students will also learn how to evaluate because they have to justify their marks hmm. students give like marks to themselves or yes yes to themselves i mean to them then i mean their peers peers okay peer to peer mark okay 
Yes, peer to peer back. Because the student will also uh, understand what, how the evaluation is done, how should be the evaluation is done. I really so, appreciate your efforts, ma'am. Uh, this is really, uh, I'm I'm thankful to you for doing this to the students because this is hardly done. I have not seen. So thank you for doing this. I mean, I do it. It's a regular practice in my class. I mean, I do it uh, since uh, maybe ten years. That's great. That's great. Um, no, I, even simply, he is my friend, or he is my friend, uh, and I will give you this much, this much marks. This is not uh, acceptable. Uh, every student has to give justification of his marks that why he had given this much marks. Mm. So they will learn how to evaluate. Got it. And that will also uh, helpful for them during the exam. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Okay. Um, so uh, the syllabus. Okay, did we talk about the syllabus, ma'am? No. Uh, I mean, uh, I will tell you what is the general structure of uh, NEP. Like, if you say general structure of NEP, every year you have to earn somewhere around twenty-two credits. Okay. okay. So uh, uh, from this twenty-two credits, uh, I mean, there is a flexibility how you are going to do this 20 earn how a student will earn this 22 uh, credits or how you are going to design a syllabus to fulfill this 22 credits but out of which 50 percent credits has to be from your ma major subject okay so uh, there will be now in our case what we have done we have taken two theory courses for, for major and one practical course for major okay so these will be uh, three. Uh, I mean, uh, there will be three papers of two credits each. Uh, so three, uh, six credits uh, he will earn over there in major. Then there will be a minor course uh, which will be having four credits. That is one theory and one practical. Now this has to be from other subject, like other than zoology. If the person is doing BSc zoology, then it is it will be other than zoology. Another important thing uh, for the first year, he has to take the two credits of open elective. That is from other faculty. Okay. Okay. It has to be from other faculty. Like the zoology person will go for arts, will go for commerce. It will go for like that. So it will uh, two credits. I mean, four credits he, will, he has to earn from uh, this thing. Then uh, two credits he has to earn from IK, that is Indian knowledge system. Then uh, Two credits he has four credits he has to earn from ability enhancement courses mm -hmm. where uh, it will be included um, one is languages and uh, in our courses uh, we uh, had included the uh, environmental studies okay so this he has to earn and one cc that is uh, extracurricular like from ncc nss pt physical education two credits from there so like this in all uh, there will be 22 credits so uh, is this applicable to all the IITs also? Like, uh, Not same, but similar kind of thing is there in IITs. Because I know what is uh, going on in IIT. In a very, uh, because I have told you my son is there, yeah. so he is in the fourth year. Uh, so I know uh, it is uh, not exactly same, but similar thing of uh, similar type of things are there in IIT also. Because they have also introduced the IKs from this uh, year. Okay, so do we have books on that? Like that will teach or uh, uh, actually you have to search. I mean, we have books, no doubt about it. But it will be not there in your uh, in your uh, normal library. Mm -hmm. Like for example, if I wanted to uh, go for uh, animal farming in ancient India, it is not there in my library. But it is available on net. I had downloaded. There will be uh, two, three institutions around Pune. I, I mean, in Pune, around my college, that is uh, Tirak Maharashtra Vidyapit. So I will go in that library. There they will have some books. I mm. have to go for Pandarkar Pratcha Vidya Samshudhan. There they will have some books. It is not like that the literature is not available. Only thing is that not available ready hand in your uh, thing, okay. in your library. So you have to take some efforts. Got it. So uh, we have talked about a syllabus just right now, the credit system and the stuff. And the next, uh, we have talked about how, you know, what are the domains from where the students should be actually acquiring knowledge, like major, minor, IKS, and all these things. And then the grading system came up, like the, the 
continuous assessment assessment thing that you have told yes, um yes. and of course the degree thing that the students will be getting anything else do you think i missed uh, one one more thing i would like to tell for msc like if a person do four years of uh, degree then the person immediately can complete his msc normal by honors in one year mm -hmm. but if the person want to go for research then he has to go for two years degree msc degree okay so this is some additional things uh, you have to think of and of course uh, not all the students which are there in third year all students will not get the admission for fourth year degree they okay. have given the CGPA criteria it should be some uh, uh, equal to or more than 7.5 okay this is this, this should be done i think yeah, only those students will get the admission in fourth year. Okay, and uh, a student can directly go to PhD after their you know fourth year bachelor's, right? Yes, they can. Which was not possible previously. Yes, no. No, no. Fourth year bachelor, ne, they have to do one year uh, MSc, then they uh, can go for PhD. Okay. Uh, PhD, sorry. Uh, four years of bachelor's and one year of MSc, then they can go yes. to PhD. Yes, yes. And do you know about any other NEP application, any you know, on the um, research side on GRF or something like that? Do you know anything about that? Ah, uh, basically, uh, the fourth year, I mean, uh, uh, MSc, they will have two uh, two types of MSCs they have introduced. One is MSc by honors, and another is MSc by research. So in research, they have to, uh, I mean, almost. 50% credits, 50 to 60% credits are assigned to research project. Okay. So, uh, and of course, if you have the syllabus, uh, good syllabus, then uh, they can go for, uh, now what is going to happen with this net and, uh, uh, I mean, all these exams, yes, I because that is not clear yet. Got it. Okay. So, um, is there any uh, such guidebook that a student can read to understand in a short way, not that full thing, uh, you know, when it's updated regularly or we have read the entire uh, it, is, it is right. I mean, uh, one guideline I had, uh, which was from April 23. But nowadays, a lot of changes are happening over there. So right now, there is no concrete uh, guidebook over uh, as such. But yes, one uh, GR, which is uh, April 23 GR regarding the NEP, that uh, is almost uh, things are clear uh, in that GR, but few addition deletions are there. And uh, NEP is implemented uh, only in autonomous colleges from this year. All SPPU affiliated colleges, they will implement in next year. Okay, okay. All the autonomous colleges are implemented from this year. Yes. Okay. Nice. Yeah, that's why you know. I mean, from Saint Xavier's College, SP College, Pune, yes. Delhi University, all the people yes. have started. Uh, all autonomous. Yes, NEP they had started. Okay. Um, do you think there is any 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 uh, change? You know, any other drastic change that is going to come, like in this NEP, or this is like? See, I mean, the the changes are going to come come up, but not with respect to the. Uh, uh, I mean the syllabus or not with respect to the structure per se but yes some points which are related to workload uh, i mean these people have to think about this because government has to think about this because the workload uh, of whatever the previous workload was there that has to be maintained so uh, in that case then the practical batches i mean how many students per batch should be there so like this small changes will come over, come up i mean uh, still people are working on it yes uh... Because the smaller the ba I'm just concerned. See, I am mostly concerned, ma'am, about the fact that whether there are enough colleges and departments for all the students out there in India who are trying to. So the mm -hmm. the lesser the uh, cohorts will be, the lesser will be the opportunities for the people, and more will be yes. the competition. Yes, more will be the competition. Even the colleges will be at risk. I mean, they have to give the quality; otherwise, they will be out from the race. Uh, yeah, that's true. I mean, if the college want to survive, the college has to give the quality. Yeah, yeah. 
so in a way it is both win win situation i should say yeah i i am i am seeing the win win situation in terms of um the students flexibility in choosing yes. his or her um career path yes yes and for the college of win win situation um should be uh, college get the flexibility to uh, run their own courses according to their own infrastructure yeah but that's just for autonomous bodies right ma'am yes but nep had also introduced a different uh, i mean all these courses which are compulsory courses so college has to again uh, do i mean i am not talking about college with uh, in terms of a management i am talking about college in terms of a teacher because the college has to improve itself yes based on all this yes because see the colleges which are uh, especially the affiliated colleges which are there i mean uh, if do, you don't do anything compulsory for them they will not do anything mm -hmm. so for that uh, the college has to improve their self okay makes sense it totally makes sense um i'm quite curious about uh whether the industries uh the collaboration with the industry will be happening more or not uh, yes because uh, this is also there that the uh, nep had also introduced the internships especially at fourth year and the msc for msc so they had asked uh, the uh, asked that uh, internship you should inter introduce internships uh, in this so for this you have to collaborate with industry there is no other option hmm. and you have to make the collaboration you i mean the uh, teachers faculty has to go visit industry ask their what is their requirement and accordingly the courses should be introduced in the, in your nep this is a good you know this is something that will be Im improving the students because uh what was missing from the whole education system till now in india is a strict division between uh academic and industry academic industries even you know not too much research was being you know the, there should be continuous uh, um collaboration with researchers to understand yes. this so i think this gap can be um shortened yes because right now like i i can give the example see whatever examples i can give all are from my department because uh, yes. obviously i had uh, uh, implemented it over here now what happened just now we had taken a training for industry people like uh, there is a industry called ross life sciences uh, which works in toxicology uh, up till now they were working in uh, uh, working i mean on animals uh, and insects and now they wanted to uh, introduce themselves into the cellular toxicology so they wanted to learn the animal cell culture so for four of uh, their employees i had given the training now when i given the training immediately we make uh, we are trying to make the mou that they are what are your requirements tell us our your requirements ki when you want when you want to employ a person what you expect from that person being a zoologist he should know this 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 this, this. so you give us that i will design a course accordingly mm -hmm. and they are agreed to this i mean they said that we will sit and we will design courses accordingly so you can conduct these courses under the skill enhancement courses on job uh, training courses and we can pick up for uh, as per our requirements okay so this even a similar kind of thing can be i mean i will i'm trying to do it with the nanak mangeshkar hospital because uh, there also they require uh, zoologist a lot so i'm going to meet their hr person find out for where they are actually requiring uh, the zoologist or the biologist try to find out how i can implement that as a course and can we have the tie up with dinanath mangeshkar so like this faculty has to do a little bit so in that course that's really interesting ma'am thank you that in that course the students can also enroll right uh, from zoology yes of course from zoology the students yes, can enroll yes. and uh, if they uh, do that course they will probably be eligible for their toxicology yes. Uh, yes 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 okay this is interesting absolutely very interesting i am so intrigued i hope this is this kind of innovative work is done in throughout the entire country 
and yes. uh, thank you for being extremely um, innovative and you know for uh, I, I i heard a few instances like your grading system and all these uh, new things you're trying to do i'm so happy to you know interact with uh, you who, who are who is absolutely really creative um, i have seen very less creative teachers in my life but who are uh, i was very fortunate i got all the teachers which are creative teachers i am so happy uh, i am happy I, I know that what creative teachers can do in the students lives so mm -hmm. i am so happy for you you and your students thank you ma'am um so let's release this video ma'am i do not have any questions further questions if the students and other people have more questions uh, i will get back to you with the nap in the second part I, if this is if it's, if this is sufficient, then I think uh, we can uh, do this. Just do this with one video. Uh, in the future, we probably need to do more. And the next half will be probably dedicated towards the statistics that are sent. Yes, I have yes. talked with one person. Let's see. We will talk about this afterwards. Absolutely, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your time. And uh, yes. thank, thank you, you so much, much for, Even for giving me this opportunity because whatever small knowledge I have, at least I can share with. Uh, all you people i don't know uh, i mean you can uh, also go back and check whether whatever i, I have told is correct or not no uh, no, no, no. I, I, we don't have to do anything like that it's of course no, no, no. i mean this is see this is a, a, a individualistic approach i mean whatever i feel nep i have told you absolutely so, absolutely uh, there will be like, different like, approaches for this I understand. Um, if I get to know, I will of course share it with you. But I think the core fundamental structure is the same. So I think everyone got to know that. Thank you, ma'am, again. And uh, I will talk to you over uh, the ne yes. next step. Thank you. Yes.